So Marvel Heroes Reborn. This is a new event I've been talking about pretty heavily here on the channel. I've given it my fair share of grievances and my thoughts. Not necessarily always in the most positive of ways, but I'm starting to change my tune, and I think Heroes Reborn has a chance to become a really, really awesome event uh, in the Marvel history of comics. I know, seems strange, but hit the like button while the intro plays, we're going to talk about it. So Marvel Heroes Reborn, uh, we know it's the new event coming out in May. It's, I believe, a five-issue miniseries with a couple of one-shots written by Jason Aaron, the great Jason Aaron. Um, now, I have been kind of skeptical in more of a negative fashion, not super excited about it. The concept of it to me was strange, but the more I'm looking into it and the more I'm reading about it, the more I'm becoming more interested and I think it has a fairly good shot of being a great event this year. Now, I know a lot of you don't necessarily like his Avengers run right now, and that's fine. Uh, a lot of people are, a lot of people aren't. But Heroes Reborn is not anything like what we expected, I think. Um, and, and, and here's why. So uh, he did an exclusive interview with uh, comicbook.com and I had a chance to sit down and kind of scroll through uh, his conversations, his thought process behind it, his inspirations behind the new Heroes Reborn event. Um, and this is what is changing my mind about it. So basically what he said is this is not what you're expecting, uh, nothing even remotely close to the original Heroes Reborn event concept back in the 90s immediate you know strike in the positive category there i think that's a good thing so i'm gonna read a couple of quotes here so he said the story really has nothing whatsoever to do with the original heroes reborn event uh the only similarity is that it, this is a look into another version of the marvel universe when familiar in some ways, but for, for profoundly and fundamentally changed in others. I'm quite confident in saying it's a world unlike any version of the Marvel U we've seen before. So very cool concept. I, I uh, thought process there. Um, so, so very cool. Whenever I read that, I was like, okay, I'm more excited just by that one statement uh, than I have been this whole time. Now we know it's going to be focused around Hyperion, uh, Dr. Juggernaut or Jugger Doom or whatever we're going to call him. Uh, and of course, the Squadron Supreme. We've spoken about that a little bit before on the channel. Uh, and, and we're getting some really cool looks at, at a kind of what we're going to expect out of the new book. So I'm excited about that. Um, you know, he goes on to talk about the Squadron Supreme, but that to me is not the interesting part. This is the interesting part to me. Uh, when he says this right here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote this. So you're looking at a Marvel timeline that played out radically different. When Galactus first came to Earth, it wasn't the Fantastic Four who were there to face him. When the Green Goblin threw someone to their death from the George Washington Bridge, it wasn't Spider-Man who was there screaming. When a Civil War tore apart the Marvel heroes, it wasn't Iron Man and Captain America who were fighting at its center. Heroes Reborn drops us into the middle of a world where the Marvel landscape has been radically recast and reshuffled in some ways I think will be surprising. Um, again, that concept, they would have led with that from the beginning that statement super excited about that because everybody kind of thought myself included that we're just getting a rematch of the old hero heroes reborn stuff we're just getting uh character mashups and he addresses that here he says to quote i wouldn't call them mashed up characters this is just a world where a lot of powers and weapons we know have ended up in different hands cool concept kind of like the what if um for various reasons, he says, Dr. Doom is still Dr. Doom, but when your arch enemy is Hyperion, the strongest man in the Marvel Universe, it inspires you to seek out the gem of Sidorak, thus giving us Dr. Juggernaut. Uh, we'll also meet the Black Skull, the Silver Witch, the unstoppable Olgog, and Thanos with his Infinity Rings. Um, so again, it's not like he's taking and just mashing up characters and, and no real purpose behind it. The concept of, okay, what if it wasn't the Fantastic Four. Uh, what if it wasn't, I don't, he didn't mention this, but what if it wasn't Peter Parker who had been by this, like 
that to me is pretty cool. And to do it in an all-inclusive event, uh, Marvel U- brand new Mar- Mar- Marvel Universe versus kind of like a what if, I think that's very intriguing to me. But if you saw the trailer, and we spoke about that too, uh, they asked why Blade? Why Blade in the middle of all this? And his response was because he's Blade and he's awesome. Uh, so very interesting there. Didn't give us any much uh, more information about Blade's role other than he's the only one that remembered Marvel U is the way it was before. But I'll tell you, with this article, reading about it a little bit more, hearing more about his insight into what he's doing, seeing the preview images. I'm digging it. I, I, I'm much more excited about it now than I was a month ago or two months ago, even when it was first announced. Um, the characters are really starting to shape out. So let me know down in the comments what you think. Did this article change your mind at all? Did the interview change your mind at all? Because it certainly did mine. Guys, you are the best part of Two Brothers Comics. Subscribe if you haven't already. Smash the like button. I know you did already, but maybe if you didn't, go ahead and do it for us. And as always, collect your way.